what are your goals? Are you looking for more of a long-term play or like, you know, three, five plus years, or are you looking for a short-term type of investments? And I don't know if I really have one. I mean, I, I think my turn would be, you know, if, if I can, you know, pull like 50 grand in a year, that'd be, that'd be great. That's kind of like the goal. Welcome back. I am your host, Chris Closes Your Deal with Real Estate Investing Made Easy. And in this video, I'm actually meeting with a seller who we just did an ovation deal with where we profited $45,000 and we're turning him into a private money lender. So stay tuned, watch how we do this and raise capital. This is how you raise private capital very easily. How's it going, Jeff? Good. I'm good, man. Good to meet you. You too, man. Where are you at right now? Phoenix, I'm at my dad's and he's here with me too. He's my CPA. Yeah, everything seemed to go pretty smoothly with the, the transaction. How did you feel after everything got finalized? It was great, man. It was great. It was quick, a little bit quicker than I thought. Just a grin of my boss. He wanted to keep me, you know, another couple of weeks, but you know, it is what it is. You know, I just gotta make it happen. And uh, I was pretty happy with it. I'm glad it went as smooth as it did. You know, I guess, you know, the, the first or second people who ever saw the house saw it, liked it, and uh, it was good. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we were able to live up to the expectations, you know, and get that across the finish line for you and, you know, in a timely fashion without like too much disturbance. So when are you headed off to St. Louis, right? Yeah. Well, I'm in route. So I'm already left and uh, I, I'm in Arizona. So I'm on the way. I just figured I'd stay a couple of days with my father before I got there. So I'll right. get there. Uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to start work the first or the second, which believe it or not, since it's going to be at the end of the week. Um, I'm just going to travel for a few days, you know, take my time and then I get a hotel and then look for a place, you know, keep the money moving. Because I think I told you in you know, my first year, you know, it's going to be a transitional year. So I'm not going to be making a lot of money. So we might as well use the money to do something. I know you had a little bit of a mortgage and probably cleared somewhere in the neighborhood of like four, right? Four something or yeah. two something. Yeah. Okay. So like, how much are you hoping to deploy into some investments? What are you looking at? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd say probably maybe like a hundred, maybe 150, something like that. I got one CD. I just figured what the hell it's six months, no big deal. You know, so I just kind of want to get my feet wet, you know, see how it goes with you. And you know, this is completely new territory. Yeah, totally. Okay. All right, cool. What are you thinking? Uh, well, you know, we have availability for different things, right? So it's all, it always comes down to the person that's looking to invest, right? Because we're doing a bunch of different types of deals all over the country. So I'll start real high level. Like, what are your goals? Are you looking for more of a long-term play or like, you know, three, five plus years, or are you looking for a short-term type of investments? Probably short-term. Short term. Okay, got it. Basically, there's two different types of, of capital partners that we typically will interview. And so we have debt lenders, debt partners, and we have equity partners. Okay. Are you familiar with the difference? No. So an equity partner is somebody that is going to come in and they're going to be partner on a property that we're going to purchase to buy and hold. And so that's typically going to be a longer term type of a play. Let's just say, for example, I'm just going to make up some numbers, but let's say, for example, we're doing a deal and it requires 20% cash to close. They bring, you know, if they invest 20% into it to give us the cash to close, then we'll give them 20, maybe 22 to 25% equity in the property. We'll keep that as some sort of rental. It could be a long-term, medium-term or short-term rental. Could be some other strategies as well, but usually those are going to be the ones. And then what will happen is after all of the mortgage payments are made, the property management payments, and the war chest that we set aside for vacancy maintenance and repairs, whatever that net cash flow remaining is, then they'll get their equity percentage of that. So let's just say it's $400 a month in net cash flow. If they get 25%, then they're going to get $100 a month of that cash flow. And then alternatively, whenever we decide to sell the property in the future, you know, call it three, five, eight years, whatever their equity percentage is, when we sell, they'll get that amount at close of escrow in addition to all the cash flow that they got. So they'll get the benefit of all the appreciation in the property as well. 
All right. So that's more of it like your long term investment strategy. It's almost, like a, almost like a dividend. Sort of. Yeah, exactly. And again, it could be as quick of a turnaround time as like three years, right? If we decide to, based on what the market's doing, we could sell the property within, you know, two, three years. If we think we're going to see an upside and, you know, we want to reposition, then, you know, you might get your money back that way. Any okay. questions about that strategy? No, I think I understand that one. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. The other type of lender or partner that we bring in is a debt lender. And so just picture and imagine Wells Fargo Bank. That's literally what it is. You're basically coming in and saying, all right, I'm going to give, you know, we're going to get X amount for this particular property that we're doing. And it usually can be structured a couple different ways, but typically it's going to be either principal and interest payments or interest only payments. You know, so most of our deals, it just depends on like every deal is unique, right? So it could be anywhere from seven to, you know, nine and a half percent interest. And again, depending on the deal, you know, it could be a little bit more, but usually it's somewhere in that range. So let's just take an example. Let's say it was a hundred thousand dollars that we needed for a particular deal. Eight percent would be eight thousand dollars a year in interest only payments. So divided by 12 months, so that would be like $666 a month in interest payments. And then the principal balance would remain the same. If it was a principal and interest payment, then that would be structured a little bit differently. So on the hundred grand, the eight grand a year, that's 666, that's payable every month on a certain day. There's flexibility depending on the particular type of deal, right? So let's just take like a fix and flip property, for example. On a fix and flip property, we would generally prefer to structure that where there's no payments until until the property is completely flipped and then we sell it. And then you would get your principal and your interest all in one lump sum. So that's one way. Another way would be, you know, like let's say we are gonna do it as a rental we might do interest only payments and that would be payable each and every month. So again, there's a lot of flexibility, just depends on the structure of the deal. The cool thing is we're not just a traditional cash buyer. But yeah, so this is Christian. Christian, this is Jeff. I was just kind of reviewing the different types of investing partners we bring on. We already discussed equity partnerships. Now we're kind of diving into the meat and potatoes of debt lending and the different structures for that. You know, I was telling them how we can do principal and interest. We can do interest only. Typically, if it's like a fix and flip, we might prefer to have payments due at the completion after we sell it. Whereas if it was a rental property, we might do payments throughout the duration. So you'll get cash flow during that duration. What I was about to go into was we're not just a traditional cash buyer. So a lot of investors, all they do is they buy cash, meaning they're going to go out, they're going to get a hard money loan or a DSCR loan, right, from an institutional lender. And usually those types of loans require them to bring anywhere from 15% of their own capital upwards to 25 to 30% of their own capital. So essentially the way that would look is this hard money lender or DSCR lender would be the first position lien holder with 70 to 80% of the equity. And then you as the investor would need to go out and somehow get the rest of those funds. It could either be your own funds, it could be a private money lender, there's a whole host of different ways. So that's how most investors do business. What we do a lot of is creative finance. So there's times where you know, because interest rates right now are pretty rough. So it's hard to, you know, do deals that way. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll find people who they absolutely have to sell because they're in pre foreclosure, you know, or there's another pain point or problem. And maybe they are locked in at like a 3% interest rate from a couple years ago. And so what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll bring the cash to close, which typically includes any past due payments that they have on their their mortgage uh, could be tax liens, could be other liens, other delinquencies, closing costs, maybe a little bit of cash to the seller. And then we'll just take over, we'll take title of the property and take over the mortgage payments for them, right? So now we're making the mortgage payments. The mortgage stays in their name. We get the benefit of that lower interest rate, right? So it makes it a sweeter deal. So we generally only have to bring a, 
we have to bring way less cash to close in those types of transactions and it makes for a better cash flowing asset. So what questions do you have about any of that? Well, the debt lender sounds good. The principal and interest and payments, that all sounds good depending on the deal. When you come across a deal that you want to do, do you reach out and do we set up an account kind of deal or how does that all work? I mean, that, that probably sounds obvious because that's how it would be. We'd have a connected account or something like that. Yeah, that's a great question. So rather than setting up additional like bank anything, what we do is we leverage what's called a third party servicing company. So there's a ton of these companies. So for example, when you were paying your mortgage, typically the company that you were making the payment to is not actually the debt owner. It's usually a servicing company. Their whole job and their whole business model is just collecting payments. That's all they do. But they don't actually own the debt. It's somebody else that owns the debt. Could be Fannie Mae, could be Freddie, could be, you know, all these other different people, right? So we leverage a third party servicing company. And what will happen, like, let's just take like a rental, for example, in a rental situation, the would make payments to the third party servicing company. That third party servicing company would look at the account and they would say, okay, this is 123 Main Street by Lazarus Property Group. Here's the four people that are needing to be paid on this. And so they'll make a payment to any equity partners. Uh, if there's an underlying mortgage, they'll disperse all of the funds and then whatever remaining equity is left over, then they'll kick back to us. So in any event, regardless of what type of investment it is, whether it's an equity partnership or debt partnership, we're the last people that get paid. Everybody else gets paid first, we get paid last. So it's in our best interest to make sure everybody else is taken care of. And you say that hundred grand that, that's in there, that just floats. Does that stay once a deal is complete, that just stays? or that doesn't go back and forth as far as being paid out you know does that make sense so say you know you, the requested amount is 100 grand we do the 100 grand that deal is closed completely mm -hmm. you know what i mean does that money keep floating up until the next deal or does that go back and forth get paid back or, or come back and forth does that make sense let me just restate the question just to make sure that i'm tracking with you so so let's say we just we need a hundred thousand dollars to buy one two three main street we close on it and then, you know, let's say we fix and flip it, whatever we do with it, then we sell it, we get the 100K back. Do we give it back to you or do we redeploy it into another deal? Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. Ultimately, that's up to the investing partner, right? Because the reality is it's your funds, not ours. So we will typically give you the option and just say, hey, do you want us to redeploy this or do you need it back or do you want us to redeploy some of it? Typically, most of the investing partners that we work with, usually they're putting money into it because they don't have anywhere else that it's going to go and they just want to keep it rolling. Other than losing value in a bank account. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Sounds good. And as far as individual investments, it all varies on what sounds attractive to you like we have an investor that is actually one of my buddies that we've been friends for like 30 years he's a fighter pilot i mean the guy makes enough money he's got a, you know a whole family four kids the whole thing he wanted to invest in real estate and he's like i don't have any time to learn this stuff like you like you do and i was like well you can lend if you want and he you know it was very attractive to him so we put initially 50k of his money because he was like oh i have more but i want to do this with my lawn and all this stuff Got it. Okay. So we deployed 50. And then after the term, we just, we said, Hey, we could shoot this back to you pursuant to the agreement. It was like a year. And then he said, I really want to redeploy it. I said, okay, cool. So we're going to do some work around. And then we just, you know, redeployed it. He looked at another deal. He said, this is the one I want you to redeploy it on. So that's exactly what we did. And we just signed a new agreement with new terms mm -hmm. on that particular property, because there are situations where you know, we sometimes invest in mobile homes and it's chattel, it's not real property. So there's ways around that in terms of security, but when they're real property, as in a fixed, a pertinent asset, like one, two, three main street, there is a foreclosable lien as a debt investor. If we're equity partners in a lending transaction, you are no longer a lender. You are equity partners with us and your value that you bring to the collective is, will you bring the funds we found the deal or we rehab it or do whatever. But in the, in the venture that you're a debt lender, 
then you have a foreclosable lien on the property. If we're flipping it and we get like vacant dwellers and builders risk and all that stuff, you're named additionally insured as first loss payee on the insurance policy pursuant to and consistent with the way in which we receive payments on a rental situation, right? We're always the last to get paid because everybody else in the transaction is going to get paid first. Does that all make sense? Are you track in with that? Yep. I kind of, yeah, I'm getting it. Yeah. Yep. What, what, what wouldn't you like about that? Well, I, well, the, the, the rollover, well, getting, getting the, you know, getting paid off of it, you know, whatever that percentage is, you know, that that's great, you know, and rolling it over, you know, cause once you get to a certain amount, if it goes up, then there's going to be more money available, you know, to invest really ultimately. Right. So the equity partner, that's that, uh, that lender, that's kind of, and the percentage is better than, than what I'm seeing. And as far as the risk doesn't seem that, that much as well. The risk is there's not a lot of risk, you know, it's a low risk. We'd be being dishonest if we didn't say that there were, if we said there was no risk, right? But, you know, we have a track record. I mean, collectively, we've been investing since 2008, 2009, um, done multiple flips here in Southern California. We're doing deals all over the country. And really the way that the protection for our investors is simply the way that we underwrite deals. We always are making sure that we're conservative. Even two years ago, when the market was skyrocketing, we had a lot of other investors. I mean, you could have basically had a lobotomy and been an investor and made money in those two years. And we changed nothing in the way that we underwrite our deals because we knew that that wasn't going to last forever. We probably left money on the table that way, but it's in an effort to protect our investing partners because we don't want to be overshooting the moon and then interest rates skyrocket and all of a sudden you can't sell deals because you you underwrote them wrong. So that's always been our approach, very conservative. And then your interest is always secured and insured against the property. You know, it's a, a much better position that way. Yeah, three layers of protection. That is the way in which we underwrite the deal. And then additionally insured is loss payee on the insurance policy. And then a third foreclosable lien on the property. And because we recognize that many of the people who lend within our organization aren't seasoned real estate investors and they don't know necessarily how to flip properties the the equity that already exists instantly in any of the deals that we lock up is protection because well guess what worst case scenario chris and i and brad we get hit by a bus and you have this lien on the property and you're like okay well these guys can't make the payments because they're dead or maybe we make it but for a long time we're in the intensive care unit you need to get rid of that property well guess what you might not have any experience knowing how to fix it and flip it and all that easy enough Put it on the market, let it sell. You're gonna make money that way anyway, pursuant to the way in which we normally purchase properties in a really favorable instant equity position for our lenders. And then for, for equity partners, um, typically what we like to do is we like to sweeten the pot just a little bit. So let's say we're doing a creative deal that requires 10 of purchase price cash to close. That partner, we might give them for that 10%, maybe 15% of equity, 12, 15% of equity. So now they're immediately day one, they're getting on their initial investment. And then as the property appreciates, you know, they're gonna get that value out on the back end as well. Right. Hey, forgive me if you guys already covered this. I'm just curious, what is what is your goal with investing? And I don't know if I really have one. I mean, I, I think my turn would be, you know, if, if I can, you know, pull like 50 grand in a year, that'd be, that'd be great. That's kind of like the goal. And what do you what do you have to work with in terms of investments? Well, to start to you know get my feet wet, I was thinking I'd, I'd do it like about 100 grand, maybe 150 on the high end, because I still do got to get a house once I get to Missouri. But I wanted in, I wanted to, you know, I'm going to pay down some of it, but I wanted to at least finance 100 grand of whatever I'm looking for. You know, I still have a little bit of you know movement of money. You know, I could do a little bit more. I could do you know a little bit less, kind of depending on what the number would be. Gotcha. What kind of other investments have you done in the past or just really, really basic stuff, man. 401k, a CD. That's about it. I'm going to rapid fire some questions. What kind of interest rates were you getting on that? On a CD? 5%. 
did it go well? Were you satisfied with the returns and the way your money was working for you? Well, I just started with that. Um, my friend has been wanting me to do CDs for years, but uh, you know, it's just, I mean, it's almost, that's like almost no risk. You know, so if you pull five grand, let it roll over, whatever the case may be, it's slow, but uh, you know, time flies, you know, when you're not really using that money, it's just, uh, it's just chilling. So it's okay. We'll see how it goes as far as the CD goes. 401k is 401k. I've had that for, I don't know, 20 years. And it's up and down because that's what the market does. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was just curious uh, about your goals too because you know some some people actually a lot of lenders we have are friends <laughs> or become friends. But what one of them lent a uh, hundred k and said just park it there. So then we're just paying them every single month, and it's like otherwise you know he wouldn't be getting anything on his money in a in a bank account. So it's. It depends right. on his goal. He said he wants mailbox money. So it's like, and he's like, I don't really want to own property in this market. You guys are the experts. You figure that part out. But if he said, if you could get me, you know, to a place where I'm cash flowing, you know, 500 to 700 bucks a month, I'm going to say, yes, let's move forward. And like we signed a 12 month with a clause in there that said, all we have to do is sign an agreement to extend another 12 months because that's the way I wanted to protect him. I wanted his cash to be fairly liquid. So we did that, although we could go up to two years or three years or four years or five, that's fine with us. But just because this situation, he was helping manage money for his mother. So I said, hey, let's just do this 12 months and then we'll re-sign in 12 months to make sure that you guys are still good. Even though you told me, keep it in there until kingdom come, that's fine. It's your money though. So he's just you know getting the mailbox money and uh, I was just curious if, if that was more attractive to you. Definitely, he's a debt lender, uh, as opposed to, hey, let's let's keep it more liquid. And it's like four months, five months, six months to it to a year in and out, depending on your goals or are you no, for the. Loan. That deal sounds right. His deal sounds right. Okay. You know, that six seven hundred bucks. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, I think that's probably what you can expect with uh, with a hundred grand being parked. Yeah, and alternatively, like. One of the ways that you can see, I mean, it's not liquid returns, but you have an op more upside is on the the equity lending because you know you're also you're getting any appreciation in the property as well. So you know, I mean, chances are we're not going to see appreciation like we did like two years ago, <laughs> you know, three years ago. But you know, historically the market has gone up. The real estate market has gone up nationally. You know, three three and a half percent every single year. You know, so at appreciates you know you get that plus if we're only buying and holding for long-term or short-term rentals you know a couple other strategies too that'll bring in some good money but you would get the benefit of the equity of the cash flow on top of the equity in appreciation so that's all right cool i guess one question that i had was so as far as involvement typically when it comes to more of a silent partner type of position right so you know we're not going to our investors uh, paint color do you think we should well you know and that type of stuff they typically just you know let us do what we do so we can you know make it perform the most we asked that question because i have, i have the when i was newer in 2009 i got a lender who he lent me a 100k he was also a realtor and he liked the idea of flipping properties, but he had never done it. And he came to like the every week he came to the project and he started telling my contractors what to do because he's like, I'm looking at it from the perspective of a realtor. I'm like, dude, you're a lender. Come on. I never used him again. I, I got money from other people who are going to say you're the expert. Take it and do it. So that's why we asked the question. He's trying to tell you where, where to where to where to what what to buy, where to put his money, and all that stuff. When you that's your job. Partly that, but then also every investor is a little bit different, and so <laughs> our partners they want to know a lot more details about the specifics of the property. Others they're just like I, I don't really care about the property and what you're going to do with it. I just care about the return. How involved or uninvolved do you? see yourself being in these types of interactions and investments yeah probably really interested in the return obviously yeah that, that would be the most important thing okay you know right. worst case you know worst case scenario and best case so we've talked about best case scenario 
worst case scenario without being killed, you know, or being put in the ICU, you know, worst case would be, you know, maybe at the 7% or whatever, I don't know. Best case, 9.5 to 15 if there's a penny. I get that. We're all in it to make a little bit, you know, even like my transaction, you know, everybody made a little bit, everything's great. I got the number I wanted, it's fine. Are we gonna get rich off a few transactions? No, but at least it's, it's, it's stepping in the right direction and using money that's just gonna be sitting for something better than you know, maybe a CD. Totally. Yeah. And the other thing is too, like the way that we, you know, we have our A tier investors, our B tier and C tier, right? And and our C tier is basically investors that were, we're just kind of like dating conversations, not necessarily, you know, haven't done an investment with them yet, you know, just kind of getting to know them. They're getting to know our process, you know, B tiers, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, but then our A tiers are, you know, guys that are consistently reinvesting funds into it. You know, they're actively investing. They're trying to find more money to invest. And typically when we look through the, the list of deals that we have available, we're obviously gonna start with the A tier investors, bring them to those guys first, just because he's in with them, obviously wanting to, you know, continue to develop that relationship further so doesn't yeah. because you haven't invested with us yet that you're not going to get good opportunities we'll certainly bring those opportunities when they arise and you know we have a lot of opportunities on the horizon but all that to say is as you get started with us it's going to create more opportunity and when you know because we also have partners across the country we have a pretty big network of investors that will bring us deals i mean we're in some some pretty tight-knit masterminds and communities with like some really high level big players that are doing large multifamily syndication deals and things like that so when there's an opportunity that arises we can certainly bring that to the table and and let you know about those as well one thing i i just thought would be good to mention is the the a to the b to the c tier lenders that we work with it's not correlated to dollar amount that they typically lend some lenders we have they don't want to even see anything where they don't have the opportunity to lend a million dollars so they said, if it's nothing, if it's anything below a million dollars, do not bother me. So they want, hey, it's a million. Okay, well, that's not going to work like on your typical, you know, Midwestern 3-2. Yeah, on the Cleveland duplex that we're Right, right. One of our A-tier investors, it, it has nothing to do with an increase in, in capital you're lending. Got it. At this point, what questions do you have for us about this process? No, I guess just let's, uh, I guess, get started. You know, let's, let's get something going. How do we do, how do I get in? We could do it one of two ways. The the first is, you know, we can specifically look at the active transactions we have. We do a lot of creative stuff and that's the first way. The second way is, you know, you could just tell us, hey, right now I have this in mind. I'm looking for something here with this, you know, relative property profile, right? It doesn't have to be specifics, but, and I wanna, I wanna see about this a fixed property maybe it's a single family or maybe it's a multi-family that's what i'm looking for right now so we can do it one of two ways it sounds like way one is probably your preference you see what deals we have we'll bring one to you that think that we think might be a good fit and then you can check it out those come out do you guys send those out or how does that go how does that information get passed to me yeah usually what we do is we have a short list of our investors that with on deals and we'll usually just do a call and let you know like okay hey we got a couple deals here like in some cases like his uh his buddy who is investing for his mom um you know he was able to deploy his whole hundred thousand dollars into the one deal other times like with his other buddy it's like hundred thousand dollars split across multiple deals so i guess that leads me to a question do you have a preference on like do you want all hundred to go into one particular deal or you find with splitting it across multiple deals, if that's what's available. I would, well, I guess I would kind of throw that back at you. What would be your recommendation with uh, your experience on that? Is it an easier slate doing one deal? Or if that one deal is not available, instead of waiting for that one deal to split it and go around, because the numbers are going to change if there are multiple deals, you know, that's what I would think. Yeah, the numbers are going to change, but they're not going to change by that much. From what I'm hearing from you is that you're more focused on the debt investing side of things, right? You know, 12 months at a time, you know, interest as opposed to equity side. So that number is not going to change a whole heck of a lot, you know, whether you're doing 100K in one deal or 100K spread across four deals. 
I got it. You know, that would be another thing. You know, you, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what groceries to buy. You know, you buy the groceries. At the end of the day, the you know the definition of passive income is something you spend less than four hours a year in time and attention to. And at right. this point, you know when when we look at if we were to do multiple deals, it's not going to take much of your time to wire funds into escrow. Maybe twice, right? So if there's two deals, it's it, you're wiring funds to escrow two separate escrows twice. Ask question. How soon are you looking to, to get your money invested into something? I don't know. I'd say within the next, I don't know, a couple of weeks, like now, next couple of days. I mean, I'm going to be traveling across the country here, and uh, I'm leaving tomorrow, so probably it will, will be a little weird in the next three days. But uh, once I get out there and I talk to my realtor, should be ready to roll, man. You know, banks are all over the place. Wiring isn't isn't very difficult. Signing the contract isn't very difficult. <laughs> Let's get it rolling. Cool. Well, I appreciate you meeting with us. I'm excited to get started here and uh, appreciate you putting your trust in us. Pretty you know, honestly, Chris, I told you in the beginning, you know, if my deal went good and smooth, you know, and I don't even know how we got into the conversation because I think you asked, what do you do with your money? You just gonna let it sit in the bank? And I'm like, well, I really don't know. You know, and then I started looking at these CDs and I said, if it goes smooth, let's rock and roll, man. The deal went pretty smooth. You know, you did what you said you're going to do. So if this is a way to sublime some, uh, uh, some income, that's the deal. Thanks so much. All right. All right, Christian. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. That is how you take a seller and you turn them into. So when I hear investors telling me, I don't know where to find private money, you're not looking. You have a captive audience of people that you know exactly how much money they have at the end of every single one of your transactions. All you need to do is ask for it. So stay tuned, watch more. We'll see how we get more deals done with our sellers and take their equity and deploy it into other deals.